All right, I want to talk about what the Salaf said about the attributes. And I want to talk about the consensus of the Salaf on the attributes, right? Because everybody finds one quote here and there where one scholar may have said this or that. But what's their consensus on how to approach the attributes? So I want to start with this quote here from Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani, uh, page 42. Oops, not that page. All right. And so we look at, um, we want to know who he is, right? He was an early jurist and he was a companion of Abu Hanifa. Pretty important, right? He's one of the, he learned from Al Awzai, Sufyan al Thawri, Malak ibn Anas. And remember that because I'm going to come back to that. Really important. And it proves that this quote is true, in my opinion, based on another thing. Really important. So the student of Abu Hanifa said this. And this, I wanted to quote it directly from Majmu'a Fatawa from Ibn Taymiyyah, just because, you know, Salafis are always going to try to be like, oh, it's not a real quote, whatever, right? So I try to quote it, and I, Ibn Uthaymin uses the same quote, by the way. So, that, you know, so if they want to sit there and debate you on this quote, well, you know, their scholars quoted it, right? Anyways, Muhammad ibn Hala Hassan, the companion of Abu Hanifa, right? And he even says here, Ibn Taymiyyah was proven on the authority, right? The jurists, the fiqaha, of the East and the West all agreed, right? There's a statement of a jama'ah, right? And we believe a jama'ah is authoritative in uh, Sunni Islam. Regarding the attributes, uh, sorry, we believe in the Quran, and Manosa also mentions the Quran and hadiths. That's pretty important, right? About the attributes without explanation, without a description or resemblance. Whoever explains something has departed from that, right? They did not describe it. And they did not explain it. They just believed in it and remained silent. Right? This is a type of tafweed. He's saying, believe in it, don't explain it. I don't want anyone I don't want and I don't want to hear any Salafis try to explain this quote to me. Because they always say, Oh, he means explain it this way or that way. No. He's saying explain it. Khalas. It literally says the word silence here. And I want to show you what Ibn Uthaymin tried to say. Okay, so this is Ibn Uthaymin, major Salafi scholar. Volume 4, page 33, Majmu Fatawa. He quotes this statement, right? The one we just went over. And then he goes and says, he goes and says an acceptable tafsir, right? Meaning, you know, a meaning appropriate to God in agreement with the apparent meaning of the book and the sunnah. So as you can see, they clearly disagree with the salaf. The consensus of the salaf is to not explain the attributes. Halas, silence. He's saying, no, nah, he means an acceptable tafsir that is agreed upon, well, that is establishes the meaning appropriate to God in agreement with the apparent meaning. That is not the same thing. I don't, I know, I know Salafis. They're going to say, yes, it is the same thing. Well, we're just going to agree to disagree. I'm not going to debate you on that. To me, this is clear. I think anyone with a rational mind who's unbiased clearly sees that there's a major difference between these approaches, right? And that describes the Salafi movement. They're a movement that wants to explain all these things. Whereas the Salaf said, don't explain it. And I do want to show you that. You notice he also says, Bila Tashbih, right? So the Salafis try to differentiate between Tashbih and Tamthil. This starts with Ibn Taymiyyah. And he says, Tashbih is permissible. Tamthil is the one that's wrong. Because the Quran says, without Tamthil, the Quran doesn't mention Tashbih. But the Salaf did mention Tashbih, as you can see from the quote I just showed you. And... I want to show you where Ibn Uthaymin, first of all, I did mention this in my last video, where Ibn Uthaymin tries to explain the hadith of jogging, and he says it is conceivable that some the kind of jogging is appropriate for Allah, right? So he is explaining those hadith. And I want to show you his explanation of, and notice here, and this is what I was just talking about, this is from Ibn Uthaymin. Negating tamthil is better than the expression of the negating tashbih. Whereas the salaf I just showed you, Hassan al Shaybani, denied tashbih. So, right? He says, denying tashbih entirely is not valid because resemblance must exist. This is there. This is from him and this is from Ibn Taymiyyah. I'm not, I'm not misquoting him. I'm not taking it out of context. This is what he actually says, right? Bila tashbih, if we completely deny tashbih, it becomes problematic. You understand? That's their creed. And I want to leave you with this, right? If you walk to me, I'll run to you, right? These are the exact hadiths I just showed you from, oh, yeah, from, uh, 
actually, this is the quote from Barbahari, right? Where he says all these hadiths, and he said to the Fuid, right? That's a Barbahari, do not explain it. Now you can see um, Ibn Uthaymin takes that same hadith, the image of Adam, and he says there is some tashbih, but it is not tamthil, right? And he goes on to even mention the attributes, right? Adam was created with his image, right? A face, eye, hand, and all that stuff. But that does not mean that these things are likened to each other, right? They're not tamathal, but there is some tashbih. I mean, this is this is not from the Salaf. This is not the creed of the Salaf, right? Uh, I think that's pretty clear. I don't need to prove that to you. I think I've shown that. Now, I want to show you other statements from the Salaf. And I did just show you this, but it's important. Because notice, Shaybani, I just told you that he studied under al awzai Al-Thawri, and Malik, right? He, I just showed you that he studied under them. That's one of his descriptions biographically. So when he says all the jurists of the East and the West agreed not to explain these hadiths and to remain silent on them, it agrees with this uh, quote attributed to these three, which is which I went over in the last video. Pass it by as it came without tafsir. Bila tafsir. Don't explain it, right? So I think that these two statements definitely agree with each other the shaybani and this one they both say do not explain the attributes right the fact that he studied under these guys and then he goes on and says all of the jurists of the east and the west i think that indicates that they did say this right historically speaking let's just look at the historical you know data here what does it tell you that there's a good chance they said that now i want to go over something else this is a quote from a book a, sheikh, uh, a scholar named Ibn Abdul Bar, who the Salafis use his quotes often because he was a Athari Maliki, right? And he wrote a book called, I forgot what it was called, but um, Malik, sorry, this guy was a very early Maliki, right? 259 after Hijrah. I wanted to mention a few Athari Malikis because you don't have that many of them, right? When we think of them. So Ibn Abdul Bar is one of the famous ones. Even though he actually went into Kalam a bit, so he doesn't actually agree with the Salafis on everything. I, I, I mentioned I have a whole chapter on him where I feel like he disagrees with them on a lot of things. But anyways, he wrote a book called the Tafsir of the Muwatta, right? Yahya bin Ibrahim bin Muzain, right? And he is quoted by Ibn Abdul Bar on volume 7, page 152, about the attributes, right? These are some of the hadiths of the attributes. He says, and this is from Yahya himself. Do not transgress it, nor explain it, right? No tafsir, nor say how, for in that is doom, right? Do, uh, and do not delve into the interpretation that no one else knows. One second. All right, this is another quote, and this is from a scholar from 770. I just want to show you because I didn't write him, right? This is from 770 because uh, I didn't really explain that in the book, so I wanted to show you that. But... Abdul Bar quotes him and he says, If you were asked about the explanation of the hadith, we do not explain them. And then we do not mention anyone who explained them. That's important, right? We don't even talk about people who explain them. And he even says Malik rejected the one who narrates such hadith, right? Uh, I asked Malik about the hadith that is narrated, all a lot of the hadiths of the attributes. And he forbade their narration, right? Because he feared people would go into resemblance, would go into tashbih. That's really important, right? If you analyze that historically speaking, right? That Malik didn't even want people to narrate these hadiths, right? And so when we narrate them and talk about them, we're definitely going against what he wanted, right? So give me one second. All right, and this is that had um, what we mentioned earlier. I asked Al Awzai, Sufyan Thori, Malik Ibn Anis, right? We just mentioned this statement about the hadith and attributes. They passed them by as they came without how, right? This one's a little different. It doesn't say without tafsir. It says bila kaif, right? Some versions say bila tafsir. Now, the, the quote I showed you in the beginning of the video from Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani gives you evidence that the bila tafsir version is also authentic, right? Because he also said not to explain it. And I also showed you that Yahya, the Maliki Athari, also said not to explain this hadith. And these are some of the statements. Uh... Somebody said about them. I realized Sufyan Authority, Masar, Ismail ibn Abi Khalid, these are early scholars talking about this hadith and not explaining anything about them. Right? So they didn't explain it. That's what they said about them. And so you could see that these uh, you know, the descent and all these hadiths on the attributes, we weren't supposed to explain them, right? 
And the Bin Hassan al Shaybani quote says, even the ones in the Quran as well. So in general, the attributes, we're not supposed to explain them. Right? That's the important point I'm trying to get out here. Right? And the Salafis do explain it. And I proved that many times. They always try to explain these hadith because they believe that tafweed is uh tafweed is like de denial in a way. So they don't like that. They want to go into it. They want to explain it. This doesn't ex agree with the Salaf, is what I'm trying to prove. I want to go into an early Shafi as well, Ibn Suraj. Salafis always quote him, say, oh, look, he agrees with us. Now, you have a statement from a Dhahabi and al -Aulu. Salafis like this book. So you shouldn't have a problem with me quoting it. And they asked uh, Ibn Suraj about the doctrine of the attributes, right? Of the successors, right? Essentially, the Salaf and the sorry, the predecessors, the Salaf. They asked Ibn Suraj, a pretty major point here, and it says here, right? And he mentions these verses. Now, what's let's, let's see what he's going to say about. It. And the Salafis love quoting this and saying, "Look, he agrees with us. We're going to prove he doesn't." In the same quote, our Aqida in them and in the Mutashabiat verses. That's all I need to show you. But we'll keep going. We accept them. We do not reject them. We do not metaphorically interpret them. No problem. Yeah, that disagrees with Asharis. No doubt about it. Uh, but he mentions that they're unclear. Right? We, we do not interpret the unclear. We do not them, make them resemble like those who resemble Allah. We do not tra translate this into a language other than Arabic. And we submit to the Zahir of the Hadith. And the Salafis say, oh look, he said Zahir that agrees with us. But you're, you're isolating one word. And you're misunderstanding the whole context. First of all, if he says not to translate it, then it definitely tells you a lot about what he, how he wants you to approach it, which is not to really extrapolate anything from it. If you listen to the Mufawida, right, and I prove this over the course of my book, generally speaking, the word Dahir is Salafis abuse this word and misunderstand it. They use the word Dahir and they try to say it means the literal meaning, which is actually could be the translation of it. So not entirely wrong, you know, translation-wise. But there's many scholars who say to take the dhahr without the meaning. What do they mean by that? How can you take the literal meaning without the meaning? And so the understanding of the mafawida, and this is, I do prove this over the course of my book. There's so many different scholars who say dhahr bila mana, right, without taking the meaning. It proves that the word dhahr just means, and this is what the mafawida teach, we accept the text, the wording, and that's it. We just accept it, believe the wording, and that's it, right? And that I think, I think that's proven by, especially here, look, muta shabiat, right? And not to interpret the unclear. That shows me that if it's muta shabiat and not to translate it in other than Arabic, obviously he doesn't have a direct approach to it. He has a very ambiguous approach to it. He's saying, look, we don't know, we don't go into it. I think that's, I think that's obvious. You know, you can say what you want about it. And I think there's another statement. Oh, no. And that's it from him. That's all I have from him. Because the Salafis always use this quote. So I wanted to show you that it doesn't actually agree with them. Because it says, it literally says, Mutashabiyat. I've proven that the Salafis disagree with anyone who says that the attributes are Mutashabiyat. So you cannot quote this guy and say, look, because he uses the word Dahir. So let me show you, let me try to prove the Dahir thing. Because I know it's not obvious, right? When you use the word dhahr, you know, somebody could say it means apparent meaning. And that's actually the translation of it. And so you could see why that confuses people. And let me try to prove that. All right, and it starts with Al-Khattabi. He's an Ashari. There's a few other points where I try to prove the dhahr point. But I think this is a good chapter on it. So I'm going to go into Al-Khattabi. He's an early Ashari who wrote a commentary of Bukhari. And I want to start with, I think Ibn Taymiyyah was the first guy to really abuse this word dhahr. Try to find people who use the word da'ir and say, look, that's what they're saying. They agree with me. Now he says in Majmu'a Fatah, volume 3, page 167 from Ibn Taymiyyah, he, write, he says that Al-Khattabi, right, who's reported on the doctrine of Salaf, which is to implement the verses, the attributes in the Hadith on their da'ir, right? Right, and then he's saying, look, this is what the Salaf said. This is what the early Ashari's, right? Now, let's look at what he actually said. Right, and he says Khattabi's commentary. This is the actual full quote, by the way, because he quotes it. He quotes him, but not the whole thing. That's the problem. He stops the quote right there. You need to go more into it and to really show us what he means. 
And so he says, right, applied the Pazadar, negated the Kaif, right? But let's keep going, right? And this is some hadith of the attributes. But what does he say on the next page, right? Remember, this is page 637. You go to page 638. Now, he does say here, they passed by these hadiths, right? And we did mention that earlier, right? That's important, but maybe it doesn't fully explain. We keep going. And the next page is important. We narrate these hadiths. We do not want them to have meanings. He uses the word mana here, right? Right here, mana. So it shows you that this is different from what they mean, right? We do not want them to have meanings, that show me that shows me something different from the word dahir, which you say is the apparent meaning. In reality, he's saying we do not want them to have meaning in other quotes. He actually goes on to take a metaphorical interpretation of some hadith, which is interesting, right, under the descent. So that doesn't agree with what Ibn Taymiyyah is putting out there. Later in the book, right, they mention a hadith on the attributes. Um and he quotes Abu Abayd, I believe, is a Hadith scholar, one of the Imams of the people of knowledge. We used to say we narrate these Hadiths, and we do not wish them to have meanings. We are free to not pre precede those who are more knowledgeable and older in age than years, right? Essentially saying the Salaf did not give it meanings, they did not explain it, right? So I think, uh, well, if you keep going, he does go on to say in this part, interestingly, he even condemns the word Zahir, in another part of the book, which is interesting, right? Al-Khattabi. He says in this page, and the other sect submits to it according to the narration in it, but taking in the reality of the apparent, right? Al-Hakika Al-Zahir. And that, a doctrine that almost leads to them saying by resemblance, which Ibn Taymiyyah literally says that, by resemblance, right? And we're not satisfied with them as a doctrine, right? And so you can see how he differentiates his own position from that one. And we can keep going. Let me see what else I have. And this is important here. He says about the, the two hands. This is al khatabi Of the meaning of the hand is not in our view a limb, but it is an attribute that was brought by suspension. So we don't actually explain the meaning of the hand. That's the important part. See? So when you deny that it's a limb, you're actually denying the meaning. That's I explained that in our, my video on Al-Bakalani, that the early Asharis always denied the meaning in the sense that they said, we affirm the hand, but we do not affirm a limb. And that is denying the meaning. That's a type of tafweed. So the word dhahir here, whenever he uses the word dhahir, it's a misunderstanding, right, uh, of his position, right? And this is another part of it. He does say, look, about the attributes. We profess it and let it run on its dhahir, right, without giving it a modality. Uh, and if it would lead to resemblance, we will interpret it with a meaning which the speech accommodates and by which the meaning of tashbih will be eliminated. So you understand, so he doesn't affirm a meaning of that leads to tashbih. For example, the leg, the hand, and all of that, we did not give it a meaning that leads to tashbih, such as a limb. And so I think it's clear that his understanding of Al-Khattabi's creed is not consistent with the rest of what's written in the book, right? So Ibn Taymiyyah kind of picks out little quotes that might agree with what he's trying to say, right? When he uses the word dahir, but he actually explains al khatabi the word dahir, and he he actually uses the word dahir here in a context which could lead to anthropomorphism, right? So when you, um, let me see if I can find something else relating to it in his book. Yeah, but you get the point. Um, you can see how he uses the word dahir, and the Salafis love the word dahir. But not everybody understands it the same way, right? And it's clear that he says, for example, right? We leave it, we narrate these hadiths, and we do not wish them to have meanings. Right? I think I made my point.